Hello, well, my topic today is Bill DeWeese, but first of all, I want to talk about not Bill DeWeese. In particular, I think it kind of begs the question as to why nobody filed to run against Bill in the upcoming Democratic uh, primary. Um, it, it's just really pretty incredible to think that nobody uh, really wanted to run. Um, I don't know if the people didn't think they had a chance or maybe didn't want to spend the money or whatever, but certainly you would think that Bill would be more vulnerable now than at any other time. And certainly he has had people that have run against him uh, over the years. Uh, just two years ago, Green County Commissioner Pam Snyder ran against him, ran a strong campaign, ended up losing. But it just kind of boggles the mind to think that uh, that nobody has uh, stepped up to the plate to, to run against Bill in, in this uh, primary election. And this all kind of stems from um, the, the latest episode in, in this uh, saga was that uh, Travis Barkley, a uh, Green County resident, had filed that he was challenging Bill's uh, right to be on the ballot, saying that as, uh, now as he was convicted uh, this past February and he's a felon and he shouldn't be on the ballot. However, Commonwealth Court ruled that he could be on the ballot because technically that Bill really wouldn't be considered a felon till he's actually sentenced. The sentencing date is set for April 24th so that he can remain on the ballot. However, before, and Bill was, you know, touting that this is, uh, he was very pleased by this ruling and he main, maintained that all the supporters and people who signed his petition and everything that they're behind him and they're urging him to, to fight this thing to, to the bitter end. But the whole problem is is that even if he does win the primary, there's no way that he can that he can serve. And Bill's only hope is that somehow he can get the appeal overturned before the no November general election. And this would be if that were to happen, it would probably be the first time in history that an appeals would be heard in such a short period of time. Typically an appeals process is something that's fairly drawn out, it's fairly extensive, a lot of times it can take maybe a minimum of a year, a lot of times maybe two years, and to say nothing of the fact that at the trial itself there was no real major legal pressing legal issues. It wasn't like well, Bill had a witness, a star witness that they wouldn't allow or that there was evidence that there was a question about whether this evidence would be allowed or whatever. It was pretty much of a strictly meat and potatoes kind of uh, kind of case. You know, did, did they believe that, that Bill had told these people to, uh, that had ordered these people, to, to his campaign workers, to, to work um, basically on, on state time? Or did the people kind of just do it on their own? Um, so, and, and the jury made its ruling, so, you know, so we'll see, but the whole idea that, you know, somehow Bill's thinking that this is, that the verdict is going to be overturned by November and he'll be free and he'll be able to serve is um, pretty much a, an illusion at this point. And, and the other thing is, is and, and this really is a very convoluted and complicated case here, but basically, here's what's going to happen. If Bill does win, well, he will win the primary. He's the only candidate now. So, but unfortunately, once he, and you have to look at this as like a two-tiered thing because you have the, the election for the next two years, but then you also have the current two-year two term. And what will happen is on April 24th, Bill will have to step down because he'll be sentenced, he'll be, he'll be a convicted felon at that point. And he's already agreed that he's gonna step down. Now there is a possibility that the, st that the House Speaker could s schedule a special election. However, the House Speaker is Republican, the Republicans control the state legislature. Does anybody really think that they're gonna go out of their way to schedule a special election? Probably not. They would just be content just to let that seat remain vacant because chances are pretty good that a Democrat is probably going to win that seat. So as a result of Bill's pride, arrogance, whatever, 
this seat is probably not going to be filled through the remainder, remainder of the year. Now let's take it a step further. So Bill will be on, assuming that nothing crazier even happens, he will win the, the Democratic primary. He will be on the, the ballot in, in, uh, for the general, general election in November. So here's the thing, is the, ju the judge will have the option that day, whenever he sentences Bill on April 24th, to have him go to prison right away. He could do that. That's what happened with Bill uh, uh, Vion, Michael Vion, whenever he was a uh, former lawmaker, whenever he was sentenced. He went to prison right away. Now, he, Bill will probably ask for bail, and it's possible he might get it. But if he doesn't get it, then he'll be campaigning in the general election from, from jail. And, I mean, how is that going to look? How is that going to look for, how is that going to make Green County look for the rest of uh, Pennsylvania? I don't think it's going to make Green County look, look too good. And so then you're going to have a, a possibility where Bill's campaigning from prison, running against a Republican. There's two Republicans that are running for, for the seat. So one of them will win. He will have a Republican opponent. And will a Republican then have a very good chance of winning? Are people going to vote for Bill DeWeese just because, because while well, he's in prison? I think that the Republican probably stands a, a fairly good chance of winning. So again, it's like, Bill, you know, you're, you're a Democrat. Don't you have any allegiance to your party? Um, no, he's pretty much thinking of himself. Now, let's say that he does win. If somehow he does win, and again, he's not going to be allowed to, to serve unless that conviction is overturned by November, which is pretty unlikely. So, he'll, he wins, he's still not going to be able to serve. So, what's going to happen is there'll be another special election where, where you would have a special election then probably next primary, which next year would be in May. So again, Fayette County would go all this time without having a representative in the State House of Representatives. So you would have almost like a year from April, well, over a year, from April probably till next May, possibly without having a, a representative in the uh, State House of Representatives. So that's a trying to say that this issue is a lot bigger than Bill, and Bill exploring all his options and trying to figure out what he's going to do. Basically, what he should have done was he should have just stepped down whenever he was convicted, whenever he was found guilty. That way, there could have had you could have had a uh, could have had a general uh, special election held at the primary to fill the rest of the two year the rest of this year's term. Plus, you would have had an, another election for the rem for the next two years. That's what happened with John Martha whenever he died and they, they had to fill his seat last year. So you're looking at, you know, and that would have been a pretty orderly, you would have had a successor. Now we're looking at just a lot of confusion and um, a lot of chaos, and, and, but it does. It gets back down to, to the question of why didn't somebody run against Bill DeWeese? And you have to think, you have to wonder if maybe somebody was thinking that maybe there would be an appointment or something and maybe that would be easier. And if that's the case, that's a, that's a, that's a darn shame. So uh, we'll have to see what, what happens in the coming uh, weeks and months ahead, but uh, certainly it's a very bizarre um, and almost kind of uh, somewhat of a fitting end to uh, Bill DeWeese's uh, long career in the, in the state legislature. So that's going to be it for this week. I want to remind anybody to uh, email me any questions that you might have. I want to uh, take questions from, from people. If you want, want to ask me something, now's the time to do it. You can send it to mokeefe at heraldstandard.com. So that's going to wrap it up for this week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.